to Six Strings and Things, a guitar adventure. The place for all things guitar and gear. Here are your hosts, Chris, Jesse, and Robert. Thank you, Scott Fletcher. Welcome to Six Strings and Things, a guitar adventure, your fortnightly webcast for all things guitar and gear. I'm Chris. With me tonight is Jesse. Hello. All right. And, uh... We are apologize for the delay between this episode and the last episode. I think this is episode 12, but we went on a field trip and we wanted to share the field trip with you guys while <laughs> it was trip. still kind of fresh. So, uh, <laughs> all right. So, Jesse, what have you been doing this week guitar-wise? Um, uh, what have I been doing? <laughs> Playing, uh, actually working with um, Lenny from uh, Steve Ray Vaughn. Um, there's a pretty cool uh, set of YouTube videos out there and podcasts I and mean, called Texas Blues Alley, which is pretty cool. He sells a lot of uh, like the full blown lessons, you know, if you want the whole deal. Um, and he seems to be a pretty good teacher. You know, he's very clear and concise and everything, um, but he's got a lot of free stuff out there too. So um, it's nice. Cool. Very good. Cool. Yeah. I've been um, working on cherry red wine by Luther Allison, which uh, is <laughs> mostly an is- inspirational song, but I'm like a minute in. And so, you know, a minute in and, and kind of I'm two minutes in, if you will, because the second minute repeats the first minute, sort of, if you follow the tab, it says, you know, play similar to, and if you listen to it closely, I don't think it's all that similar, but uh, <laughs> you know, which is fine, which is fine. Um, uh, it's a good song. It's a fun song. I think I'm almost at my limit with it, though, um, in terms of sort of what I'm going to get out of it or what I'm going to be able to – I shouldn't say that – what I'm going to be able to do at this level. When you, when you played it for me, the, the, the next bit, <laughs> the next 16 <laughs> bars kind of takes off. So Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, he pretty much starts that song at 11 and just stays at a real even – high pace of 11 the entire time he doesn't really back <laughs> off except for like to do vocals which i totally get why he doesn't play while he sings because how could you i mean what he's playing is really hard and complicated and mm-hmm. and there's no human being can sing and do that at the same time i don't think mm-hmm. but uh yeah so i think basically i've hit the wall as to where i can go with it um and i think it's one of those songs where i get a few more years under my belt i come back to it and say, okay, let's start working on the solo. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, and I've got several songs that are are like that. Like I intended to come back to this past summer, um, Iron Man. Uh-huh, yeah. Uh, come back to the solo. It didn't quite happen, but I don't think it's because I can't play it. I think it's probably because I just didn't really focus enough on that. I got distracted by other things. Right. So, um yeah, so it's a good song. Uh, it's a tough song. Uh, definitely a bit off more than I can chew in terms of the whole song, but uh, it's definitely worthwhile pursuing. Um, also work on, on some new strumming patterns uh, for the blues, and I hope to be able to meet with my instructor later this week and uh, sort of cement those in a little better. I'm not quite happy with where I am on those, but uh, I want to try to sort of do a nice mix of rhythm and lead stuff to sort of round out my playing a little bit. Sure. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. So. Because when you our, jam, you know, you want to be uh, supportive of the other guys, too. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. And and uh, I'd be able to, um, I think for me, when it comes to that, it's being able to end one part and take over the other without Smoothly. serious interruption. Yeah. That's yeah. the trick. Because I think I can play fairly solid rhythm as long as it's a basic 12 or 8 bar blues. You know, I can probably sure. I can do that without much problem. But right. once it comes to switching roles, that's where there's usually a hiccup or – and I still need to be more mindful of when I'm playing lead how many bars have passed. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think a lot of that is just going to be – you get a feel sort of like – like now you have more of a sense. Like maybe you doubt yourself a little bit at the end of the turnaround or whatever right. um, and it's your turn to, to blow or else you know go into the rhythm or something. Um, but um, you probably aren't as doubtful as you were. <laughs> no, you know what I mean? It's kind of like, oh, I suspect this is it. And then you probably like most of the time, yeah, that was it. You know, you just got to say yes. I know what well, I'm doing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, you know, one great way I, I found of practicing this, and this was an, um, suggested to be my instructor, and I'm really taking it uh, to heart, is gra- grabbing some backing tracks on YouTube. Absolutely. Basically say, you know, blues in 
12 bar blues in a or whatever right mm-hmm. and so instead of playing with it at first just listening to it yeah hearing the turnarounds so hearing the five chord go to the four chord and then hearing the turnaround yep. and then okay so that's what this is supposed to sound like and then after maybe two of the 12 bar sort of uh playthroughs um start playing my guitar real simple stuff in a maybe a minor pentatonic you know, first position, whatever, just real simple stuff, not worrying about trying to wow myself or my friends as if I could. And, um, <laughs> and then, you know, say, okay, when I hear the turnaround start, so when I hear the fir- uh, the one chord on the 11th bar mm-hmm. hit the root note. Right. And that's sort of the key to then move into whatever turnaround to say, okay, my solo is over now mm-hmm. and getting myself in that habit and then just bumping up the difficulty a little bit of what I play so that, you know, I'm a little have to be a bit more conscious of what my solo is. Right. And can't just, you know, one note or whatever. Um, and then, you know, keep moving up with that. And I was making some fairly decent progress a um, uh, month or two back. I need to get back into that. I need to really sort of uh, get into that. almost like woodshed that a little bit um, to get my ear and then switch, you know, to other um, keys so that I'm used to hearing that sound. That, right. And it's, it's really detecting a relative change, you know, at that point. Mm-hmm. Um, know what does the five key, five chord, I'm sorry, sounds like. How does it diff- sound different in each key? Right. Yeah, that's all good ear ear exercises. Right. Um, you know what else you could use? Now that you have a looper, you could hypothetically um, set it up where you do the twelve bar, you know, set, mm-hmm. and then at the end of that twelve bar set, you hit the looper so that it plays the rhythm that you just played twelve bars, and now you're playing lead. And yeah. I, can you set it to where you can then record what's going on here while it's playing the other bit, or not really? Uh, that's something to find out if you I got to find it out. I think I can. Um, I have the Jam Man Solo XT for the listeners at home. Um, <laughs> so write in. Can you do that? <laughs> so, <Yeah. laughs> and uh, so the thing is, if you could, then you can alternate those bits. Of course, it, you know, with your, with your garage band, you can do it e- easily. So you do a track and you do the rhythm and then you do lead. And then when you play the whole thing back, just alternate or switch the parts. Start out with the lead bit and then transition into the rhythm when your lead part starts. That's a good idea. And then, or, yeah, you know, I guess what I could do is, um, yeah, I can make one real long loop. Sure. Rhythm, then lead, you know, and then re- repeat that as well because it's got a real long recording time compared oh, that's to my true. other loop pedal, which is like 38 seconds, which is just not enough. Oh, no. Yeah. No, in modern days, they have like many, many minutes. Yeah, well, it has like an SD card in it now too. You know, That's a micro sweet. SD card you can put into your computer and save your loops and all that kind of stuff. Love technology. So yeah, that's really good. Yeah, good stuff. Good stuff. So, uh, anything about this week in guitar history? Did you do any research on that? I did. Not. I so did not. <laughs> okay. <laughs> my so. my exploration has been uh, more into like sounds and other blues players. Like I got this thing in my head where it's like I got so into Stevie or back into Stevie because I liked him back in the day. Um, that I'm like, oh, who else is like that? You know, who is, you know what I mean? And there aren't too many, really. So I started looking at, like, the, the new, you know, hot, newer, I guess, hot players. <laughs> I'm dating myself. <laughs> it's like I still think of Stevie as kind of new, you know. Um, but compared to the old guys. <laughs> oh, sure. Compared to Muddy Waters, yeah, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> so I've been listening to a little bit of, uh, uh, well, Joe Bonamassa. I uh, downloaded a couple of his things. And, and boy, he's a monster player. Yeah, yes. Now his sound is not my, he's more Gary Moore than he is Stevie. Although it depends. There are some songs that he he must break out of strat. That uh Blues Deluxe song, he's all over the map in terms of sounds. I don't know if you know or remember that song, but man, that's a monster track. Um and so yeah, it's overall not my favorite sound, but really good player. You could listen to. So I'm kind of looking for other guys who sound like cuz I love that sound. In fact, we were at a, a uh, we went out to dinner tonight, and they had a band there, and um, the jazz was pretty good. I mean, they played a train, a couple standards, you know, and they were good. Um, guy had a Z amplifier, which you don't see very often, and I think that's a pretty pricey thing. It's kind of like a dumble, and um, and a Strat, and boy, he had a nice woody tone. I mean, they did uh, Hey Joe, and he really copped that Hendrix sound, nice. and. Um, so the vocal songs were not as good as the <laughs> instrumental songs. 
<laughs> it's like, but um, they were all over the place. They did uh, Hey Joe, and they did uh, I forget what pop song. They played some pop song from the eighties. You know, they were just all huh. over the place. But um, but overall, pretty good. The player was good. The sound was good. But yeah, that Stevie sound. You know, the the single coil Strat. You know, clean but played heavy and so still looking. Yeah. Well, you know, it's good. It's good to explore. And yeah. uh, have you have you listened to Gary Clark Jr. yet? No, I haven't listened to him. All right. Yeah, he might be worth checking out. Uh, I don't think I have. I've got some stuff of his. I'll have to loan you. I'm pretty sure I have somewhere. Um, yeah. Uh, so maybe him next or uh, boy, I'm drawing a mind. It's been such a long day. I'm drawing a blank right now as to I should have these just rolling right off of my. Tongue. I mean, I've heard a lot of stuff that I, that I liked, you know, like Kenny yeah. Wayne Shepard's got some really good stuff. Oh, yeah. He's you great. know, and um, not what I was looking for for the moment, but I'll certainly listen to that stuff, too. I mean, he's really good. Um, Chris Duarte, I guess, is one of the people I've never heard of him before. Um, Corey, somebody else is Corey Stevens, I guess, is another Texas blues strat player type of thing. And these aren't names that I've heard before. So now I'm going to look them up and, you know, uh, I tell you who should check out Anna Popovich. She is from Serbia, uh, started getting into the blues when she was a child because her father had this huge blues collection Uh and she plays strat like nobody's business. I have just the story. I have to get some of that. Yeah, (laughs) she is awesome. I've seen her in concert twice, uh, once at the Billtown Blues Festival here and then another time uh, in Bethlehem, PA and uh, just a great show. Good time. Great music. I really like her. I, I find it hard to believe she's not bigger in this country than what she is. Yeah. Um, but a lot but, of it, you know, is image here. Yeah. It's like, you know, blues, blues, rock, whatever, from like a girl Serbian person. <laughs> it's like that just goes against people's. I mean, for me, it's actually like, oh, that's a cool thing. Right, you know, right, but uh, I don't think that's typical. We'll see. Yeah. So, listeners out there, uh, give Anna Popovich a chance. She's uh, really an amazing player. If you haven't had a chance to listen to her, uh, check her out. So, uh, why don't we spend some time talking about our field trip? Sweet. I think it's about that time. So, yeah. So this weekend, um, Robert, who is uh, again not on the show with us tonight, but uh, actually was with us live in person, uh, <laughs> <laughs> went to uh, Guitar Center with us uh, out in Scranton, PA, and we went because I'm interested in buying a new amplifier. And of course, because the two make, behind you are not enough, and you need the two more. behind you. Yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we'll talk about why I want one here in a minute, I guess. But um, so, you know, Robert was looking at guitars and uh, mixers and stuff like that. And you were messing around with some amps and guitars with me. So it was, like, it was a good field trip. And oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, so um, I'm interested in a new amp. I would like to move up to the tube amp world. I just want to I want to give it a shot. I want to I want to see what it's all about. And uh, feel the glow. Feel, yeah, you know, <laughs> that, that, that amp, the tube amp sound. And I and plus, two, I have, winter is coming, so you can heat your room. <laughs> that's, that's right. Oh, well, actually, it's funny you mention that because I, uh, I got a couple of comments that I've been researching these amps. So anyway, I'm looking for a, uh, well, originally my intent was an under 20 watt amp. Mm-hmm. All right. For yeah. the home, bedroom, whatever, um, tube amp. And so sort of laser focus on the Fender Blues Junior uh, 3, which you pointed out that the NOS is the the way to go on that because the upgrade of the speaker is well worth the money spent. So we went and checked out that. And then uh, you started playing the PV Classic 30, mm-hmm. um, which was also a very impressive amp. 30 watts, a little more wattage than I was really looking for, but I don't think it's so loud that I can't play it in uh, my office without much problem. Mm-hmm. Uh, my home office at least um and then we also came across the vox night train uh g2 right and that's 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 the combo is what we were playing apparently there's another one there's a that's head. just the head yeah. yeah it's just the head so um yeah so we did some exploring and uh let's talk about these amps for a little bit <laughs> cool yeah i'm more confused than ever <laughs> yeah same here i mean there's only three choices and honestly i've, I've written off the fender simply because the other two have channel switching. Mm-hmm. And I think for the slight extra money for the other two, that would be something I would want. Um, even if, and the sounds are all a little different. You know, the, the problem isn't that there's no difference in sound. The problem is which one do you like better? 
Right. You know, because one has, a, you know, the Fender has a really nice blues slight breakup thing to it. Um, the Vox had a nice over, I mean, actually, I like the PV, like the more crunchy overdrive, you know, the heavier stuff. Um, but the Fender cleans are, well, they're Fender cleans. Not quite a twin, but pretty close, you know, and right. so, ah, geez. <laughs> but the Vox had a lot of, like, uh, tone switches that you could really play with the, uh, the sound. Yes. So I don't know. I mean, I, the, I wasn't even thinking about the Vox. I mean, I had no idea about the thing until we saw it there. And now it's like, that might be a front runner for me. Yeah, because, you know, when I was thinking Vox, I was thinking AC-15. Yeah. yeah. If anything, right? And uh, I don't even think I played through an AC-15 while we were up there. No, they had them over in the other area and we didn't yeah. really play them. Yeah, and because those three, they were the the Guitar Center. And by the way, Guitar Center, if you would like us to review one of these amps for you, you know, <laughs> send a few uh, around for review. <laughs> yeah, we're we're gonna tag you on Twitter for this episode, and so uh, we hope you watch it, and uh, we hope you maybe send us some amps our way. Uh, we'll, we'll advertise for you. We already are. I uh, like so, the store. Actually, I want I want to say that I thought it was a really cool store. The guys were really cool. The uh, you know nice low chill atmosphere and everything. It was good. Yeah, yeah. Before we get more into the amps, I think it's worth pointing out that, you know, uh, yeah, I've always had good experiences at that store. I've always had good experiences at Guitar Center in general. And we're not being paid by them. We're not being given anything. But you just heard us begging for stuff. Uh, I've always had good experiences there. And in particular, that one in Scranton, you know, I've, I've purchased my SG there. Uh, I've purchased a couple of things there. And whether I'm making a big purchase or a small purchase, it's just been a good experience, mm -hmm. you know, overall. And you're right. The guys were laid back. We didn't, there was no high pressure sales. Right. I mean, and one guy even told us like, oh, you know, well, Black Friday's coming around the, right around the corner and yada, yada, yada. Yeah. And I was like, wow, I was kind of surprised. Did, you know, yeah, hold off that and uh, buy yeah. a better price. <laughs> wait, yeah, wait till the price. Wait. Yeah, like that's, that's an interesting sales tactic. But OK, you know. Uh, uh, so, yeah, overall, great experience. Um, so they had these three amps side by side, which it made it super convenient for us to <laughs> test them all out. We weren't hopping around the store and they're all for listeners at home. They're all around, say, five fifty to seven hundred dollars in yeah. price, which is about as cheap as you're going to get for a, DC a pretty tube decent amp. tube amp. You know, it's you're not going to get you can get them much cheaper, but, uh, you know, you just want to be careful. Yeah. Um, the Fender awesome clean tone and you're right the breakup i was concerned that the breakup might happen a little too easy though with that amp yeah um, maybe i i think it might have been a, an adjustment issue mm -hmm. um because neither one of us are, are looking for playing out you know with a band type of thing right um maybe sort of jam sessions you know and but but it'd be it wouldn't have to fill a big room you know or a club or anything like that right. so i think at the levels that we would play I, I think cleans will work pretty well from any of those amps um i think we just didn't have it set quite right to get a really loud clean yeah well and that's what i really started to appreciate and i never really appreciate it much with my two amps i've got a fender mustang one and i've got a fender frontman both great amps uh, both solid state amps but I, I noticed more variation when you start messing around with the knobs on those two amps that we were playing. Yeah, significantly more variation in sound. I mean, we got some very different sounds out of that Fender by just turning the dials, and it sounded one way, and then it sounded like a completely different. And right. I was very impressed by that. There is sort of channel switching on that amp. There's apparently a fat switch or something like that. Okay. Yeah, which I did not see on the app as we were messing around, but I've been reading about it online. Um, so it might be worth um, – might be checking some videos out later and uh, listening to that fat yeah. switch on, fat switch off and see Definitely. what kind of difference. Is it, a real, is it a real channel change or is it maybe just an effect? I don't know. I've also heard that on that amp, um, the spring reverb is prone to breaking. And if you put that amp on its side – and move it like you put it in a car, put it on the side or on the back. You can kiss that spring reverb goodbye. Okay. But yeah, don't do that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's supposed to be a simple fix though. It's supposed to be like a $5 fix or whatever that you can, you can go in there and do the wiring yourself. So I don't know. Uh, it's just what I heard. Um, the PV was cool. And I've seen online some video reviews that says the back gets really hot. In fact, the top gets really hot. Oh, wow. Yeah, so hot that, you know, they were saying that um, uh, some past older models might have had some problems with switches melting. Oh, wow. And people talking about, like, this one guy was playing. He would reached around and touched the back of the amp, and he moved his hand real quick. He's like, ow, that's really hot. 
Well, there <clears throat> there are twice as many power tubes in that because the other two we we're discussing are 15 watt models, and they use two. I think right. they're both EL 34s. Yeah. Um, the PV has four of them, and it's a 30 watt model. So I'm wondering how much of it is that, and how much of it is that they're just biased to to run hotter. Um, which is yeah. an interesting argument. I mean, some might argue, and we didn't really get that much into the sound because it's a story, you know, and we didn't have that much time. But if I had it in my, you know, room to play with, um, you know, you can get into the the little, you know, the real tweaky stuff in, in terms of difference in sound, where if you bias the tube really hot, you know, then you get that breakup, you know, a little earlier. Right. Um, there are mods to the PV, actually, that... Um, in fact, the higher level PV, the 50, you can just pull two of those 34s and get a 25 watt amp. Huh. Um, so then you get to break up a little earlier because, you know, it's only 25 watts. You right. have to do a little mod. You actually have to pull two of the 34s and clip a couple pins and therefore make those tubes useless. You can never have, well, you'd have to replace those tubes to be 30 watts again. Um, and then you put them back in, there you, then you can have a 15 watt amp. Okay. Interesting. Now, I wonder if just because I would if I you know, got the P V that I might do that just to get the break up at a lower volume. Right, right. But yeah, was, I didn't I didn't know about the heat actually. Yeah, it's it's definitely worth checking out. There's a couple of videos online. I just went to YouTube and did P V classic thirty review and mm-hmm. uh, a couple of comments about that. I liked the sound. Uh however I thought or I felt that the sound of the PV Classic 30 was in some way, some of the settings that you were playing with, fairly close to the stuff that I can get f- w- easily with my Mustang 1. Mm-hmm. Okay. Some of the sounds just sounded familiar to me. Yeah. Now, if I had A-B'd them, I might have noticed the difference between yeah. the two, right? Um, but, you know, I think it was still a pretty good quality amp for sure. Oh, uh, yeah. Also, American-made. Mm-hmm. Uh, another so if that's a thing for for a buyer that's something to be aware of and then there was the vox night train and i don't know how i feel about that amp yeah, it's kind of a dark horse well yeah. you know what's weird about it is i like the, the variation that you get with the the various tonal switches and everything but i'll say this for all the flexibility that was there they weren't terribly intuitive Oh, so no. so you really have to play with it and get to know that of course you would if it was your amp you would and you'd right. b- get to know it inside and out and i i don't know i suspected that would be one <laughs> the one yeah so I, don't know, I really have to play that one again because i'm yeah you know i'm interested in that one yeah we should probably get a second trip <laughs> <laughs> is anybody closer has Vox? <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, yeah, actually, I think KNS does. Oh, does it? Yeah, you know, we were kind of building up a guitar center, but our local store, KNS, they're cool too. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, I've always yeah, had yeah. good experience there too. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I've, I've had nothing but great experiences at KNS as well. So I, I didn't want to just, you know, target the big box of store. It just happened to be where we'd gone. Uh, but yeah, KNS um, has been great for us too. Uh, they're in South Williamsport, Pennsylvania, for those of you who are listening. Um, we need to rent those amps. For yes. a week, <laughs> and have a pizza party, and annoy the neighbors. And we uh, need to, uh, t- tag Fender, tag Vox, and tag PV on this podcast. That's right. Send them around, guys. <laughs> yes. Let us do an amp shootout. All right, and send them our way. We'll be more than happy to play. You know, the thing about the Vox though was that uh, what concerned me a little bit about it is that you were puzzled by it, and you've been doing this for a long time. Yeah, but I'm not a two amp guy. Well, that's I mean, true. I'm into like running through menus on modelers. <laughs> it's like it's a totally different world. So like, no, I was like, oh, uh, yeah, this makes it more right. <laughs> I tease, but you know what I mean. So um, yeah, I, but but again, you know, you're gonna whatever you end up with, you uh, you're gonna get to know inside and out. So I, what I just need to know is, the, does the thing make of the few sounds that you want to get out of amp, because you can only really expect a good, you know, a few sounds if you're going to switch between them and everything. Um, then, you know, does that do it better than any anything else? And so far, it you know gave a good account of itself. And that I wasn't, I can't say I wasn't expecting. I just wasn't thinking about it. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, I wasn't thinking about it either. And it's just one of these things where there's three really good choices, which is awesome, by the way. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'm at a loss and I've been watching some review videos and reading some reviews online, trying to look for things. And I honestly don't know which one I like better. Well, and you know what's funny is part of it is 
uh, my taste changes from one day to the next. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's that thing where it's like, yes, I had this awesome sound. And then they wake up the next morning. It's like, yeah, that's really not that good. I, what was I thinking? Yeah. You know, and you read this one and everything has to do with guitars. You know, it's like, well, this was my favorite guitar last week. Now this right. week it's something else. Or yeah, I put these pickups in last week. And I've seen this in like pickup forums where it's like, oh, I made this awesome hybrid, blah, blah, blah. Pick. This is the best thing I ever heard, blah, blah. And then like a week later, you'll see further down the forum, the guy will be like, yeah, I'm tired of that. <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> all right yeah yeah so i don't know i i just uh of course you know i can go back to that store listen to all three of those amps i'd probably still not know which one that i really uh want to get well i think it may end up coming down to get one of the features that you have that you know you like the sounds mm-hmm. and it's also one of those things where when you're a being things right there it's like then these microscopic differences come up. But once you get it home and in your crib and you're playing and everything, it doesn't matter. You know, yeah. it's a good sound. You're good to go. Yeah, I know. And what I'd like to do is see if I can find a really good model for the Blues Junior for the Mustang One. I, I, I have to think there's some out there. There's got to be out there. And then if, if, if there's a really good quality one, then it would make sense to really focus on either the PV or the Vox. And... Uh, yeah, just need to do some more research. Yeah, that's true. And I need to see what people are playing, not because I necessarily want to be like so and so, but because if I like a certain set of sounds and they're using the Vox amp, let's say, then right. maybe it would make sense to to go in that direction. It's hard these days because I mean, if if we were looking at you know like a Marshall Stack versus a Fender Twin versus a Vox AC30, then you can go and say, well, I like Brian May's sound, you know, so Vox or Beatles or something, you know, British that way. Or you could say, I like this country guy or whatever who who plays a twin and go there. But I mean, now all these amps are sort of not, you know, borrowing sounds from other amps, you know, like I didn't think that night train sounded particularly voxy, you no, know? I mean, and so it's like, okay. <laughs> I mean, it's trying to cover more ground than just that. And as was the, the blues junior, I, th- I think they're all doing that. I mean, they have their own sonic sort of fingerprint, but they also want to be wide ranging enough that you could play clean blues, you know, slight crunch, heavier crunch, you know, up through at least ACDC with these kind of amps, you know, right. and um, maybe more. <laughs> maybe, you know, the, the people I've been reading about on the um, the, the classic uh, 30 is uh, basically saying that, you know, you're good for country blues, classic rock, and that's about as heavy as you're going to get. Which is fine. I mean, which I'm is not, fine. Yeah. You know, if you want to do me sugar, then you stick a metal zone in front of it. <laughs> well, <laughs> and that's just it. You know, I kind of like the simplicity of the Blues Junior. Mm-hmm. And if I want crunch, I've got the Tube Screamer. I've got the orange pedal. You know, right. I've got – I have pedals. Yeah. And so, you know, I can just dial in specifically what sound I want with the pedals and the amps together as opposed to – Worrying about, you know, multiple channels or right. or fancy girth mode, whatever that was on the Vox Nitrate. Right. <laughs> so, oh boy, I don't know. Our listeners are probably sick and tired of uh, hearing us waffle over amps. So let's move point. off of amps and on to pickups. So oh. I, got, I got a toy. Can, can you see the toy? Oh, I can see that. Yes. Yes. So uh, I had to try this. I've, I've read, did I tell you about that? I think I did. We were talking a little bit about these in the yeah, car. Yeah. So... The way this works is this guy um, came up with these pickups, and they're different than most. It looks like a single coil pickup, okay? But there's actually six coils in there. Oh, that's cool. Isn't that cool? Each one of those is an individual pickup. And uh, and there's two neodymium magnets, which if you know anything about magnets, are very strong magnets. And then the pole pieces, the way they get in their various pickups different sounds is they make the pole pieces out of different materials. Um, the magnets are pretty much always neodymium, and there's always these six coils. And three of the coils are round one way, and the other ones are reverse polarity. And, of course, the magnets are reverse polarity, so they're humbucking in every permutation. Um, they get a humbucking sort of pickup sound when and they're connected in series, and they get that really you know single coil kind of sound when they're in parallel. So this is fascinating. I mean, I'm thinking, what? Well, looked really cool, but do they sound good is the main thing, you know? Well, that um, website that I was telling you about, the Texas Blues Alley, he replaced the pickups in his main guitar with these things, and boy, they sound good. 
I mean, they're clucky and stratty, and he gets a, he nails that Stevie Ray tone when he does the the Lenny thing. I'm like, wow. So um, so I looked on forums, pick up forums, pick up Winder forums, and these guys actually, you know, Jason Lawler's on the one, you know, in the one, and the people who actually wind pickups, you know, custom ones, and they all have pretty good opinions of this guy and his and his stuff. So I had to get one. This particular one I got off of eBay because it was cheap. Um, but I have another one to match it um, coming from the manufacturer, and I'm gonna put them in my one of my guitars. <laughs> We're gonna see what I think of this thing. Oh, I can't wait! I'm I'm just excited about having like a, you know a single coil sound that is um, single coily but noise free. Because boy, noise, some people don't have a problem with the hum and the buzz and everything from right. a Strat, and it just makes me crazy. <laughs> you know, teach his well, own. I think you should record yourself playing um, either video or audio only um, before you do the switch out. Oh, yeah. And then, you know, play on the show or record and play for the show. So we can A-B these things and listen to them and, s- and just hear what the difference is between, um, you know, the coil. and you know, that, that pickup and your old pickups and whatever guitar you put, put right. them in. I will do that. That would be awesome. Definitely. And then, uh, yeah, that'll be cool. And then maybe I can get some uh, more pickups from him. So we'll have to tag Zex Coil on this thing too. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. We got all kinds of tags. We're gonna have several tweets about the show. I can see it now. Come this on, guys, is, uh, make this a very merry Christmas for us. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It's, it's the holiday season. Well, it's not exactly the holiday season yet, but um, yeah, it's actually we should probably title the show "Chris and Jesse Beg for Toys." <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, uh, any anything else you'd like to talk about tonight, Jesse? I think I'm done. <laughs> yeah, I think I am too. So, all right. Well, please remember to subscribe to our show. Um, you can click on the subscribe link, uh, like us on Twitter or follow us on Twitter, I guess. Like our videos on YouTube. And if you have any questions or you want to contribute to the uh, conversation, just tweet us at SST Show or email us at uh, six strings and things at jestercat.com. And we'd love to. Uh, have a conversation with you also feel free to post comments on youtube so boys and girls just remember keep picking and grinning good night six strings and things a guitar adventure is a production of jester cat studios you can see more about this and all other jester cat shows at jestercat.com you can also email the show at sst at jestercat.com or continue the conversation on twitter at sst show you can follow Robert at RS Macy, Jesse at Jester 700, and Chris at CW Cult. Thanks to Jesse for playing and recording our intro music. 